Oh yeah, it's talking red. Uh, Gareth decided he doesn't want to open his god for this one, so <laughs> so I'm taking I'm taking the lead on this one. Uh, but there's only one place really to go with it, or at least to start. Liverpool beat MK Dons last night in the League Cup. They drowned quite easy. Um, good performance all round, I thought. Yeah, it was sound. It's the first time we've been this far in it for about three years or something like that, isn't it? Because uh, we, we keep going out. So nice to actually go into another round. I thought it was great because. Said, said on other stuff, I don't think the fact that the League Cup is what it is these days is Liverpool's fault or Liverpool's concern. And like the concern for us is trying to win the league, it's trying to defend the Champions League. This is an added bonus. And if you can put a side out like you did last night and go deep into the competition, then fantastic. Because I think there was a lot of joy to be had from last night because it was so different. And it was so nice to see some of those players as well. Because, yeah, OK, you might have seen them for the under-23s or whatever, glimpses here and there. Maybe you, you go to the academy and watch the football there. Maybe you watch it on LFC TV. A lot don't. I don't. I just haven't got the time. I don't find the time to watch it. It's not that I'm not interested. So to see some of these lads, you know, sort of, OK, it was League One opposition, but still it was a big test for them. To see them, you know, play and come through it and do so well. And Harvey Elliott at 16 basically running the show was boss. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's, like, it's exciting as well because... You know, did, I put something on Twitter yesterday, you know, I'm obviously an old ass, and I can remember when Fowler played in the League Cup and we were all waiting for him to play. We all knew he was boss. We all knew the stories. We'd seen how many he had scored to the Rezies. But, you know, Sunus was holding them back and wouldn't give him a go. And then Fulham away, gives him a go, he scores. Fulham at home, second leg of that tie, he scores five and then he goes from there and he's Robbie Fowler and I it think, was fantastic. I think the difference with, with that game, I think you've just hit the nail on the head, is that it felt like the League Cup, even the FA Cup, uh, Cup in the last couple of years under like Rodgers, under God forbid like Roy Hodgson, you're seeing the remnants, you're seeing, you're seeing like the fringe players, whereas Jürgen Klopp's come in and just done, each year he's just got rid of players that he doesn't want anymore. Like. God, how many times do we think we've seen Ryan Kemp play and um, Markovic somehow was still hanging around yeah. and was and, and yeah. I mean I, don't get me wrong we did see Pedro Shiravella last night which blew, mad, me, blew me mind yeah. that he's like in the under 23s but he's about 30 probably by now uh, get, getting a testimonial <laughs> probably next year um, no it was quite nice to see um, young exciting players because we had a quiet transfer window the only signings we made were, were kids when yeah. it? it was other than Andy Lonergan um, Seb Vandenberg um, and Harvey Elliott and you just touched on it there I thought he was he was great he was sparky he was lively, um, and I thought he was the I thought he was the start of the show, person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think the one where he beats a couple of men and plays that ball to Milner for our post, you know, that's a player far beyond his years there to be able to have the confidence to do that at that level. I think a lot of players, even when they've got the ability he's got, when they're given that opportunity, the easy thing to do is play the easy ball to, to not give it away. You know, and not play your natural game. He was just on that pitch going, I'm boss, I know I'm boss, and I'm playing my natural game and watch me go. Nearly scores a great goal at the end, should have scored the other one as well. And I think now as well, I mean, okay, it's MK Dons, and MK Dons are basically the same league as Tranmere Rovers. But nevertheless, I think now it changes the dynamic both for him and for us and for Klopp and the coaching team. So all of a sudden now, you know, if you see him on, if you seen him on the bench for a Premier League game, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. No, you'd be like, he sound him. I'd yeah, love yeah. to see him come on last ten minutes or something like that. And like all of a sudden as well, I, th I think like the constantly shifting dynamic with all the players is that interesting as well because you know we were all expecting Brewster to shine and he had a quiet night. You know his movement was good and he was unlucky with the one where there's a ball in and he's nearly on the end of it. But aside from that, like I say, pretty quiet. Whereas Elliot takes his chance. And there's maybe an argument to say he's now jumped ahead of Brewster in terms of being on the bench and, and, and being a, a lad who might get 10 minutes here and there. But, but that, then that's thrown down the gauntlet to, to Brewster though, hasn't it? Mm. And so now he has to do something. And I, hope, I hope, you know, we got Arsenal, didn't we? And I, I hope that doesn't change yet. I hope sort of when we play them, that clock goes with a, a similar team. He might, he might be tempted to go a bit stronger, but I'd like to see some of them lads again because you know, they did themselves no harm, even, you know, the keeper as well, Hoover I thought was great and yeah. scores the other, um, Jones was neat and tidy, you know, no, no one disgraced themselves and in fact, if you wanted to be critical, you're probably critical of, the, the, of some of the senior players. Yeah, as you can say, everyone's talking about the kids and how, how well the kids done, but for me, I said to you off it, like, this was the time, this was the game for me, where, for the likes of Oxley Chamberlain, who started against Newcastle, um, he started against Southampton, did he? I think so, yeah. um, And th that's his time to go, Klopp, you need to play me. And it felt like 
I just felt like he didn't deliver at all. And I don't know if it's to do with the fact that he's not in his usual team. He's been, you know, injured for a year. It's hard to bed back in. But even so, you still want to see more. And my personal opinion um, as to why maybe Oxley Chamberlain's not performing as well now as what he did when he first came in is that we've changed our system and that actually the midfielders facilitate everyone else to make mm. everyone else look good to make everyone else shine the assists come from the fullbacks they don't come from the, the midfield and um, the front three can sort themselves out a lot of the time as well they are the stars of the show with Trent and, and Robertson whereas the the midfield and I, who I think are fabulous they're quite engineered yeah when and I felt like get on the front foot. I felt like last night everyone just wanted to to shine which is a good thing but that's not the system we play no I mean he was unlucky with the shot wasn't he it was a good effort there and it's a good save by the keeper gets a little tip on it but there were some there were some balls he tried that definitely didn't come off and, and actually were quite far from coming off and there was there was a moment as well where he tried something and, and no one made the run and he was you could see him fuming about it and maybe there is a little bit of that in that you know it was a bit of a Frankenstein of a team thrown together and although those lads will have trained together and things like that there won't be the same understandings and things like that so you know perhaps some of those balls he played Last night, if he was playing them in the Premier League and, and there was Firmino and Mane and Salah there, they, they might read them and then all of a sudden it looks like he's, he's it's a great ball rather than a, than a dud, if you like. Yeah. So. I don't know. Uh, and I think it's, it's one of those as well with the likes of Adam Alana, Dejan Lovren. It, it's, a, it, 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 it's just, you feel like you're seeing the last of that group of players now, aren't you? Like Sturridge just gone um, this season in, in this window and now obviously Mignolet has gone. They are the last two now, um, and I think we probably would like to have seen maybe, I don't know, Hoover at centre-half or Seth Vandenberg at mm. centre-half and said Lovren, but he's not going around, he's still going to do a job, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he was he, he was very Lovren, though, for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, the one where he's, he's muscled off the ball, you know, on, when he's sort of just on the edge of the box there. You, you know, there's no need, like, just, you know, put it in the stands, give it to the keeper, do something. Don't do nothing if you know what I mean, and and that was that was Lovren S. Obviously, he clears one off the line and does does Callagher a bit of a, a favour there. But yeah, it was a kind of there was a spell there where it was a reminder of the Liverpool mm -hmm. defence of old, if you like. Yeah. And it was like, you know, yeah, I remember this. Let's not go back there because you know <laughs> it made you, it, it was a reminder, wasn't it? That yeah. How calm it is now watching watching the Liverpool the first team, if you like, because you just don't feel that way anymore. You know, you see the keeper, you've got confidence in the keeper, you've got confidence in the back four. And you just don't see those calamity moments that we, we saw last night. I thought the keeper did well, by the way. I'm not, I'm not getting stuck into him at all. I thought he played really well. And, you know, he's, be, he's been in the Ireland senior squad and, and looks, looks rightly so, makes a couple of good saves. But, yeah, Lovren. I, I think, I think it, it makes sense to have kept him round. And, and he's there to, you know... A, break glass if there's an emergency type thing but let's hope there's no emergency mm. let's hope and I think this will probably be the last resource to see a Dejan Lovren in the cup competitions this season but anyway uh, as you know after every single game we do a post-match audio show and a post-match pint with uh, Gareth right here who usually starts it with some sort of get in or whatever um, and <laughs> I can't I can't Big mock salt. it up let's be honest <laughs> I can't mock it up if I tried I'd just get absolutely ripped um, but Rob Gutman in his, his finest form saying that basically Harvey Elliott um, was, is probably better than Pele or something on the post-match pint last night it's really good entertainment and here's a little clip of it now Harvey Elliott is off the chart. I, we were joking, but I saw Messi at Anfield in 2007 as a 19-year-old, and he was shite compared <laughs> compared to Harvey. Harvey Elliott. Okay, we look. It was the only the MK Dons. It was only the League Cup, but he was word perfect. Was yeah. He was word perfect. He was what that means is he was touch perfect, but not just touch perfect. He didn't just keep it simple. He was creative. His crowning moment should have happened. The bit uh, with about five or six to go, where he takes two, it's one touch, bar. two touch, looks up, bends it superbly and hits the bar. He deserved the goal, he deserved two goals. He was perfect. I, I would have him in the match day squad for the rest of the season if we had to without any fear. And there's your clip from the post-match prank, which is included in our wonderful video package. Yeah, uh, previews, reviews, uh, second looks, Stat shows. Uh, we've got loads of plans for documentaries and stuff like that, which will be, you know, you, be available to you if you subscribe to the video package or the package for everything, which is the video and the podcast. And look, if you just want to have a go as well, um, you can do. You can download the app. It's, it's on uh, available for Android and Apple, 
And when you download the app, you get some free tokens. So without having to spend any money, you can buy, in inverted commas, some of the, the premium shows. So if you want to have a go at last night's post-match pint, for instance, just download the app to your phone. Use your, use your free tokens to buy it, if you like, and, and you can see what you think and then go from there. But like I say, loads of exciting plans around the video. People keep saying, why um, is the post-match pint? Why are you charging just for that? Like, we're not. We're charging There's for, loads for everything. Yeah. But um, I think, you know, longer term, I'm not sure whether this is in place. I'm probably not the best person to ask them. Not the techie ones, if you like. But I know there's a longer term plan as well to be able to buy individual shows. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's in place yet or not. Greg will know better than me. So ask Greg. Um, but yeah, download the app and have a look. Like I say, you can have a go for not the shop. I was going to say, you get a free post-match pint, which is always a good thing. Uh, just quickly, I just want to touch on the draw. Obviously, we get Arsenal at home. Um, it's not an easy game. I think we... It like, like, like any... Like any <laughs> Hi, Sam. Uh, like, <laughs> like every game now in the League Cup, you want the easiest opposition. You want a nice away day. I want a bit and like bit and yeah. Albion away. I thought that would have been good. Or Crawley or Colchester. Or Colchester. That would have been good on but yeah. uh, for the first time in ages it seemed like just the, there was loads of Premier League ties mm -hmm. um, so the majority of the teams who were still in it will have to put out fairly strong sides and, and probably Liverpool too or at least a stronger bench maybe yeah and it potentially makes it easier to win if you get through doesn't it so like Chelsea got Man U didn't he so you know one of them's out um, but we'll see. I mean, I think it's interesting. I, like, uh, Rob, you'll, you'll see his reaction on that post match point to be saying it was not happy, it's fair to say. But I think if it goes. He wants back, to Oxford United away. That's because yeah, he, he loves, it. He, he loves he to does, go down yeah. there before like, all his London aways. If, with the Arsenal thing, I just think it's a good opportunity for the like, you know, so okay, Harvey Elliott's, uh, you know, being able to shine at MK Don's away. Um, but can he shine at home against Arsenal? Mm. And if you put him in, it's another little test for him. It's another little part of the jigsaw on his way up. If you like to, to play him for the first team long term type of thing. So I hope that there's another mixture in, in terms of the team. There probably will be. It almost feels like, you know, Klopp should just ring Arsenal and just say, off the record, <laughs> uh, are we going to put like some, some you know, 40... Like, I think it was a five... We had five players under 21 last night, I think, yeah. on, on the pitch. I almost thought, you know, like... Probably a show in itself, this, but you know, the, we keep on hammering the League Cup and saying, you know, it's not worth it, and France has got rid of their version of it, and that sparked another debate. I wonder whether there's some way, and maybe it's just too complicated, but almost of like making it harder for a Premier League team to win it, almost. So saying, mm -hmm. like, you know, almost having tiers of teams somehow, and then saying the top tier of teams have got, has got to field five under 21s. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And then, and then you can field the rest of your first team, but you've got to play To give it more of a chance. So, so if you said, like, if that was Liverpool, City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, whatever, is, is tier one, and, and then did it like that, and, and it, it was a sliding scale, I think that could be quite interesting. Yeah. And, and maybe a little way to revive a bit of interest in it. But I think all the Premier League ties will revive some interest in it anyway, and certainly, you know, I was talking to some lads on Twitter yesterday and we were talking about the League Cup. Like, it's getting hammered and it always gets hammered. But it was net, like, it was good at times with Liverpool. Liverpool have won it more than anyone. It's any the first one club. I saw us win. Yeah, I mean, but, but it's also as well, one of the first matches, or the first match I ever went to was in the League Cup. We played Crew Alexander at home. <laughs> In, it was the Rumbelows Cup that <laughs> we won 5 1. But there were 17,000 at Anfield yeah. that night. So, you know, no one was loving the Cup then. And the, this Arsenal game, you would imagine it would be pretty much near a, a sellout. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a. That brings with it pressure in itself for some of these young lads. I think. I think as well. Like probably last night, if Shakiri and Origi weren't injured, they would have started. Yeah. But maybe it was a good thing because it meant that Elliot got to start. Because I don't think he would have started. I think he would have come off the bench. But it's good. Good moment with the kids as well, wasn't it? Did oh yeah. That? Did he give a share to him? Or? Yeah. The kid. The kid. What someone's put it. The lad who's done it put it on his Twitter where basically like the kid was desperate to get on, and he's, he's basically gone like, Dad, will I get arrested if I, if, 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 I, if I run on? And he's like, nah, you don't need a kid, go on. And, and so the little kid runs on and he's running around all the players and then he goes up to Harvey Elliott and, and he's like, can I have your shirt? And straight away he's like, yeah, they are. Good lad. And then you see th there's a picture on the same lad's Twitter account of the kids on the coach home. Oh, like, made up with the I shirt. I love that. And Listen, I, I, I imagine Elliott goes on to be like, you know, a top star, which it looks like he's got every chance at this point. You know, that kid will have that shirt and he's got a little memory forever that's boss. That's boss. He's only literally 16 years of age. God, when I was 16, I was... I don't know, drinking WKDs on like in the park, like and he's there playing <laughs> he's there 
I have forty. Sorry, mum. Don't tell me, mum and dad. They all thought I was like round to be right or like in in village at the shops, just shopping. I wasn't. I was drinking WKD. I was an absolute gobshite um, when I was sixteen. It was fair to say. I mean, <laughs> some, some might say nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the Arsenal game, I just wanted to quickly bring up. Um, I'm just got the the fixture list on my phone where it falls. There's a group of games where I think he has to play that younger side that we were talking about because from Man United away, which is Sunday the twentieth, we play Man United away. Then we've got Genk away in the Champions League. Then we've got Spurs at home in the league. We'll have Arsenal at home in the League Cup. We'll have Villa away. We'll have Genk at home in the Champions League, and then Manchester City on the Sunday at home in the league, which is possibly um, our biggest game of the season uh, over the, the, you know, the Etihad game. So it's a packed run out and it's it's a game every couple of days that so it's Jürgen's squad rotation is really going to come into into play, isn't it? And and it might be a case that actually, if, if this game fell any other time, if Liverpool win in the Champions League, if we didn't have that many games, if we... If, if we would have, like, instead of Man United, Spurs and City, we had, I don't know, Burnley at home, Sheffield at home and Villa at home, it might have been too big of a problem, but there's just a string of really yeah. big games that we, we just cannot lose there. This is the way it, it always is, though. You know, if you're the top side, this is what happens, and, and this is what happens with the fixtures. And obviously, if you're the top side, you win more games, you go further in cup competitions, etc., etc. And I think as a fan, it's what you want. I've got to be honest, you know, like... When there's a match, you know, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, whatever, and that's continuous, that's what you want. You know, you know, we were moaning the other week, saying, oh, fucking hell, there's no games for ages. So we can't have it always. I, I like it when it's like this, and I think as well, you can build up a bit of a head of steam, and, you know, you can sort yourself out of it as fans and say, oh, no, the squad, and too many games, and too many competitions. I've said it before, say it again, that one of the best seasons ever as a Liverpool fan was 2001. We win the cup treble. We, we, I think we finished third in the league, and that got us in the Champions League. And some of the players that season, you know, Carragher, etc., I think are playing like 60 odd games mm. and not moaning about it. Yeah. They cracked on, they wanted to play. You read Carragher's book and he talks about like, you know, you just got up, you, you won, you come into work next day, let's go again, let's go again. And, and, and you just got into this rhythm of winning and it was fantastic and you, you knew it was going to end up in something good. Liverpool could get yeah. in that same rhythm. And I think, you know, loads of talk has all, all summer still now about is the squad strong enough, is the squad strong enough. I think we saw last night that you know some of those lads will be all right if you want to turn to them. Yeah, and it's all about momentum, isn't it? And the thing is, right now the the league's our priority. Where yeah. I don't know it, with with when they won the, the treble if that was sort of the case, but the league's our priority. We all know that. Anyway, like we said earlier, um, the Anfield Jack's got a brand new shiny, lovely app. Um, it's free to download, so make sure you get on your app stores, iPhone, Android. It's there for free. Um, you can go on our website to have a look as well. There's some links there as well. Uh, I think it's forward slash tour app, isn't it? The Anfield Jack.com forward slash tour app. Um, all the information there. You get 300 free tokens. So what Gareth was saying before, you can spend that spend that um, on whatever shows that you want. Try it, just have a little go, see what you think. All of the stuff that we do was on there and you get so much content. There's about two to three podcasts a day, reaction, preview. So say today, if you were to log on today, you're going to get your Friday show, you're going to get your review of MK Dons, you're going to get what well, weekends you, you get anyway, but then you've got team talk, AFQ, all of it's there. All your pre, uh, pre and post match stuff is on the app. Get on it. It's dead good. We like it a lot. Uh, we work really hard on it. Um, it would be very nice if you could continue supporting us as ever. And thank you for your continued support anyway. But uh, that's been your Talking Reds for Thursday. Thank you very much.